Fellas, if your dynasty team is stuck in the middle of the pack of your league and you are too far away from making a true championship push, it's probably time to start selling some of your players that are keeping you in the middle of the pack. So today we're going to go through five guys that are keeping you in the middle of the pack and that you should be selling right now so you can acquire some assets and change the trajectory of your team for the better. And the first guy that we're going to start with is arguably the biggest winner of free agency from an NFL standpoint, it's Eagles running back Saquon Barkley. Now, why am I starting with Saquon right off the top? One of the biggest, again, one of the biggest winners from free agency. Why am I saying that he should be sold in dynasty leagues? There's two massive reasons, right? First reason is that the receiving work is about to go down for Saquon Barkley. In 2023, DeAndre Swift himself had 39 receptions on the year. But if you take out two games where DeAndre Swift had 14 total receptions at one game, he had six and the other, he had eight. If you take out those 14 receptions, which is 35% of his total on the year, he's then averaging just 1.8 receptions per game. And ever since Nick Sirianni was hired in 2021, no running back has topped 39 receptions in a season. Kenny Gainwell has put up 30, has put up 23 and 33. Miles Sanders himself put up 20 and 26. Running backs do not have good receiving upside in this Eagles offense. And when you look at Saquon's receiving stats, that's part of his value in fantasy football. When he was with the Giants, he was getting a ton of volume. And you can see it in the past three years with the Giants but he was scoring off of those opportunities. So less opportunities now in Philadelphia makes it way more difficult to put a fancy points. And the second big reason is because of how the Eagles operate their offense in short yardage at the goal line in the red zone, right? With the tush push, with the brotherly shove, whatever you want to call it, and having a quarterback like Jalen Hurts. In Sirianni's tenure in Philly, Jalen Hurts has accounted for 52% of all team rushing touchdowns brotherly shove or not 52 percent of the rushing touchdowns have come from jalen hurts those are valuable opportunities for saquon barkley that he's now going to miss out on because of jalen hurts now having a running back like saquon could mean that hurts doesn't need to run it as often on the goal line or in the red zone or in short yardage situations but sirianni has shown his hand a little bit that he wants to use Jalen Hurts in those kind of situations ever since 2021 in 2022 and this past season in 2023. Again, I want to bring up this that number again. 52% of the team's total rushing touchdowns the last three seasons have come from Jalen Hurts. So there's a world where Hurts still steals those carries from Barkley, leaving a lot of unrealized fantasy points. So the situation looks so good but Saquon may not be coming through with the fantasy points because Jalen Hurts might be stealing though. So Saquon is going to get a ton of rushing volume. We that There is really no one else behind him, maybe Kenneth Gainwell, but he's only going to be in there to give Saquon a breather every now and then. But with the question marks about Saquon's receiving upside in this offense and even the red zone upside too with Jalen Hurts, you should try to capitalize on the hype before it's too late. So the big question then is what can you get for Saquon Barkley right now? If you are wanting to go after draft capital and really just draft picks only, you could probably get a mid to late first round pick this year, depending on the person. If you want players, you can maybe tear down to a guy like Isaiah Pacheco, and you could probably get a mid to late second round pick on top of that as well. And it may sound like it's a steep drop off from Saquon to Isaiah Pacheco, but the fact is that Pacheco still has youth on his side in one of the best offenses, if not the best offense in the league in Kansas City with an improving offensive line. So tearing down to a guy like Isaiah Pacheco sets up your future excellently, way better than a guy like Saquon Barkley, who's going into his 27 year old season, who who knows how much he's got left in the tank with his injury history and the amount of work that he had in New York. The next guy may be a little more tough to sell, not because it'll be hard to sell him, but you may not want to sell him. It's Travis Etienne. And look, Etienne had a great season in 2023. He was the running back three overall. He was healthy for the most part in, for the season. He played all 17 games. 
He was top five in receiving yards, evaded tackles and yards created. And heck, it was even top 10 in opportunity share, receptions and targets, yards per reception and touchdowns. On top of that, he got 47 more carries and 23 more receptions. But here's what actually matters when you look at ETN's stats in his play from last year. His yards per carry dropped from 5.1 in 2022 to 3.8 in 2023. And his rushing yards went from 1,125 to 1,008 in 2023. So the touches went up and the yards went down. Now, it didn't help that he was running behind the second worst graded offensive line in terms of run blocking per PFF. So because they were unable to run the ball, that's why you saw the uptick in receiving work. Now, the offensive line should be better going into 2024 with the Mitch Morse addition from free agency and the Ezra Cleveland re-signing. So because of that, I don't think we're going to see both carries and receptions increase again. We may see the carries increase or stay the same, but I doubt the receptions are going to stay the same and they're probably going to decrease as a result and vice versa. If the receptions stay the same, we may see less and less carries. And on top of that, you have a head coach in Doug Peterson who the past two seasons in Jacksonville, he's really relied on Travis Etienne, but before Jacksonville, he was known for having committee running back situations. So with the uncertainty of what the volume could look like, with the coaching, with the pieces around him, right? His offensive line, the wide receivers, his quarterback, all of that just leaves me with so many question marks that it makes me believe that now is the time to sell him and get him at a peak value. And it's going to be tough. I get it. He, again, a top three running back from last season. He's a young running back who still has good years ahead of him. But that's exactly why you should move him now, especially when it, this outlook that he has is riddled with so many question marks and doubts that I personally have. The other question that you can ask yourself about Travis Etienne, can he finish better than the running back three in the future? Right. When we're talking about guys like Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, heck, even Jonathan Taylor and Kyron Williams, right? Those guys are also pushing for top three finishes in fantasy football. So does ETN really keep pace with those guys with their situations? I don't think it's exactly the same. I would think that ETN kind of fits into that Jonathan Taylor, Kyra Williams category than he does with the Brees Halls of the world, the Bijan Robinsons of the world, the Jameer Gibbs of the world. And you take a look at ETN's past season, there was really no consistency they were all good finishes but there wasn't really any consistent finishes the first eight weeks he was the running back two and then from weeks 10 to 18 after their bye week he was the running back 15 the rest of the year right so don't get me wrong running back 15 is also very very solid but for the top value that you are holding on to with etn and how low he can finish below that value it's probably the time to sell him. So with ETN, what exactly can you get or what should you be targeting if you're selling him? I think it's very similar draft capital to a Saquon Barkley. Maybe it's a tick higher where it's mid middle of the first round just because ETN has youth on his side and has less track, uh, less track on his tires. But realistically, you could probably get a Zay Flowers who is two years younger than ETN and a and in a better offense. And really, and I should say this too, and an early second on top of it, you're not going to do a one for one with Zay Flowers. So you can get an early second on top of Zay Flowers. And then you're in a prime spot in your rookie drafts once once the NFL draft happens to get one of these rookie running backs, whether it be a Trey Benson, a Jonathan Brooks. Uh, Blake Corum, Jalen Wright, whoever you want, you are in prime. You are in prime position to grab one of those rookie running backs. Next guy we'll discuss is DK Metcalf, and DK did not have the season that many people expected him to have last year in 2023. He saw his lowest receptions and his lowest targets since 2020. Outside of his 37 point fantasy week in Week 13 against the Cowboys, he averaged just 11.8 fantasy points per game. 
before that week 13 game, he was the wide receiver 34. And then from week 14 until the end of the season, he was just the wide receiver 27. So not what you needed and not what you were looking for from one of your top wide receivers on your team. Now, Moving forward, because Pete Carroll is no longer in town, it is now Mike McDonald, and he has hired Ryan Grubb from Washington to be the offensive coordinator. Maybe things will change a little bit in Seattle, but it really would go against the skill set of DK Metcalf to not continue to utilize him as the red zone and deep target in the offense, right? Tyler Lockett's getting up there in age. JSN is really going to continue just playing from the slot. He will play outside a little bit, but he is going to be most effective from the slot. So for a guy like DK, always on the outside, big play threat at all times, right? But that's really the argument for DK moving forward at this point, right with the competition that he has in a Tyler Lock and in JSN. And you will see people argue that, hey, DK Metcalf was top 10 in red zone targets and in deep targets, and he was top 12 in air yards. So, yeah, the big plays didn't connect in 2023, but if they connect in 2024, wow, he's really going to pay off for you. I don't want to bet on a guy like DK Metcalf when, a conting- when the contingency is if it connects, because I don't know if it will. Shoddy offensive line play right from the interior really affected the offense and never really made Geno Smith feel comfortable. So that affected his play in return, then affected really all the receivers and and even the run game. So the offense really wasn't what we were used to in terms of efficiency and production. So again, on the contingency, if the big plays connect, that's why you need to get off of DK Metcalf. Because if they don't connect, you're going to... Be, you're going to stay stuck in the middle of the pack of your league. So what can you get for DK Metcalf now? Personally, I would go target Nico Collins. And, you know, with the other two guys, are you know, gave you a couple options. But for DK, I am really kind of singling out Nico Collins. And the reason why I say Nico Collins is because of the fact that he is a part of the Houston Texans who are an ascending offense who is still relatively young. He is just one year younger than DK Metcalf. And on top of that, the value on Nico Collins may be a little bit lower than it should be because of the recent acquisition of Stefan dig so you can add even more on top of nico collins to sweeten the deal a little bit and really 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 kind of steal the trade in your favor and the other part too about nico collins's outlook for the future like i said he is just 25 years old he is going into the prime years of his career and it's not like Stefan Diggs will be there forever. He's only got one year on his contract in Houston. And they, yes, they could resign him after this year, but then he's going to be 30, 31, 32. So we might see some of his play de- decline a little bit, which honestly makes it even better for Nico Collins. Again, going into the prime years of his career, he could really step up and be a true difference maker for that Texans offense. So again, getting Nico Collins plus for a DK Metcalf right now, if you're stuck in the middle of the pack is beyond ideal. And if you can get that, it's a steal. It's an absolute win in my book. Now, the next guy is going to be a hard sell. It's going to be a tough pill to swallow because you are not going to get what you want in return for this guy, but it's time to sell Mike Evans and just get whatever you can for him. Mike Evans has been so good for so long he has finished with over a thousand yards receiving in every single season of his career of his 10-year career he's finished as a top 15 fantasy wide receiver in seven of those 10 seasons including three top 12 finishes in his last four seasons and just in 2023 alone he finished as the wide receiver seven in what seemed like a horrible situation from the beginning of the season baker mayfield was his quarterback his offensive line had a bunch of question marks And he had a running back in Rashad White who isn't the most efficient running back. And we saw that, I mean, in his rookie season. So who knows how much of a contributing factor the running game was going to be to the offense. And somehow, some way, Mike Evans still finished as a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy football. But the time to cash in on Mike Evans is right now. If you're rebuilding, you got to get what you can to continue building to the future. And the other... The other tough part about selling Mike Evans is that you're probably selling him to a team that is winning a lot right now and making a championship push. 
which stinks because you're giving a good player to a winning team. And I know that doesn't sound the most appealing, but you got to do that because you're not going to be able to sell a 31 year old Mike Evans to one of the teams at the bottom because that does them no favors to invest in a veteran like that. So maybe you can find a team in the middle of the pack that wants to make a championship push and you can give them an asset like Mike Evans and get something in return. But ideally you want to target like those top three teams that could use the services of Mike Evans because ideally the return package that you can get for Mike Evans is that second round pick that they have. That's an early second round pick because that puts you in position to really take any good player that comes from the NFL draft, whether that be a running back, a wide receiver, you are in a prime spot to get a young studded talent at one of those two positions in place of Mike Evans. And you may not see the same production right away from that rookie, but in the long term, because you were playing the future, it's going to pay off. Now, if you are looking for like a player, your options are pretty limited in a return, right? You can maybe go trade for a guy like Jahan Dotson, who still has youth on his side, who's going to get a quarterback upgrade. But that's not really an even trade, just doing a one for one with those two guys. So you're going to add like a draft pick on top, but a second seems too heavy or it seems too rich. Then you're doing a third round pick and the odds of you finding good talent in the third round that can contribute in a way down the road like a Mike Evans can is very, very slim. Right. So at that point, it's probably most ideal, most smart to just take that second round pick. So, again, Mike Evans, it's a it's a tough pill to swallow and it's tough to accept the fact that it's time to move on from him right now, but your team will thank you later three years down the road when your youth movement, your 22 year old, your 21 year old investment is really paying off in a big way. And the last guy that you need to sell if you are rebuilding is Najee Harris. And man, ever since that 2021 rookie season where he had 380 touches those touches have just plummeted, right? You look at his reception numbers from 2021, he had 74, but in 2022, it went down to 41. And then in 2023, it went down to 29. And his carries have stayed relatively high, right? He had 255 in 2023, but he's never really been efficient with those carries at all, right? Even if we go back to 2021, where he had over 300 carries, he was 53rd in true yards per carry. He was 41st in yards per touch in 2021. In 2022, he was 59th in true yards per carry, 52nd in yards per touch. And then this past season in 2023, he was 36th in true yards per carry, so it's a little bit better, but it's still not great, in 46th in yards per touch. He's never been efficient with the touches. So, yes, there is always the intrigue, and there's the saying that volume is king, but if you can never really, like, make something happen with those touches, it results in really, really disappointing performances. And that's what it's been for Najee the past two seasons. Now, Arthur Smith is coming into town as the new offensive coordinator, and we all know, we all know how much he loves to run the ball. I mean, you go back to his time in Tennessee as their offensive coordinator and his time in, in Atlanta as their head coach and play caller. Like you just take a look at last year, like the Falcons literally had the worst pass rate over expectation of any team in the league, right? Part of that is due to having Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke as your quarterbacks, but multiply that with the fact that Arthur Smith just likes to run the ball whenever he gets the opportunity to, and that's what you get. You have the worst pass rate over expectation. So the intrigue for Najee Harris, right? You're, you are trying to sell somebody on buying Najee Harris, right? That's the intrigue. Arthur Smith is now the offensive coordinator. He is still getting 250 carries as a running back. Maybe some things turn around with the offensive line. Maybe he gets a little bit more efficient with those touches. That's what you are selling the people on. With Najee, target that early second round pick if you can, or just try to get as much draft capital as you can, because it's, especially with the early second round pick, you are in prime position to grab any of these rookie running backs in those rookie drafts. Marshawn Lloyd, Jalen Wright, Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, the list goes on and on and on, right? Though That's the prime spot to be in. So try, try to go get those picks. But if you want a player, you can try and push your luck with a Ty J Spears, a guy who is four years younger, four years younger, 
and in a situation that's perceived to be not good, so the, the dip in, in Ty J Spears' value, you can maybe add on top of that a little bit too. But at that point, like it's not substantial draft capital, right? Versus that that second round pick that you could get from a team. So you 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 really get to choose what sounds more appealing to you. But personally for me, I want that second round pick because I just know the talent of these running backs versus Ty J Spears, where I still don't know exactly what that situation is going to play out to be. That'll do it. The five guys that we talked about that you need to sell if you are in the middle of the pack of your league and you need to just get out of the middle of the pack so you can make a push for the championships in your league in a couple of years. Those five players are Saquon Barkley, Travis Etienne, DK Metcalf, Mike Evans, and Najee Harris. Thanks for tuning in. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below who you are targeting, buying, selling, all of that stuff. Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed as we get closer and closer to the NFL draft where we will be live right here for the first round. So come hang out with us as we react and dissect everything that happens and even all the content that comes out to you after that, where we start posting more consistently, much more daily fantasy football content that is available to you. So again, make sure you're subscribed, have the notification bell on, so you do not miss out when we go live for the first round of the NFL Draft. Thanks again for tuning in, and until the next one, deuces.